Hi, I'm Sandwich, and we're going to be looking at IK scripts. IK scripts allow you to make expressive NPCs like this one here. IK scripts allow you to take a hand and a shoulder position, and it automatically places the upper arm and lower arm. So it looks like your NPC has arms, and it looks natural and lifelike. I'm going to go over a breakdown of how to create an IK script. As you see here, we have our model, which is moving around his hand, and his head is moving, and then the upper arm and lower arm is being calculated so that it positions it so that it looks like it's a natural arm moving as you'd expect. To create an IK script, all you need is a hand and a shoulder, and then the IK script does all the rest for you, and it calculates the positions of everything else. Okay, let's take a look at the math. This circle here represents the hand, and this square here represents the shoulder. The goal of an IK script is to calculate the elbow position. So if I take an elbow out here, this will be its elbow. It needs to find where the elbow is relative to the hand and the shoulder. Here we have a triangle between these three different points. And now that we have this triangle, we also want to break that into two triangles by putting a line down the center. Now that we've done that, you can see we have two right triangles, which means that the triangle has a 90 degree angle on one side. Right triangles are really useful because they allow you to calculate the other sides of the triangle. A right triangle is made up of three parts, an adjacent, a hypotenuse, and an opposite. The hypotenuse of a right triangle is the longest side of the triangle. And that's the side that is not touching the 90 degree angle right over here. Then we have the adjacent and the opposite, which can be positioned however you like. It's completely arbitrary. For the adjacent, I'm only looking from this position here to this position here. Now let's look into how we can find the length of each of these sides. So from the shoulder to the hand, we can find that length because Horizon has code blocks that allow us to find the distance between two different points. Since the adjacent is only from the hand to the midpoint, the adjacent is going to be half the length of the distance from the shoulder to the hand. So that's how we can find the length of the adjacent. The length of the hypotenuse is something that we can set it beforehand. That is gonna be the length of one of the arm pieces. You can see we have this piece here, which is the, the lower arm portion. And Horizon, we can measure pieces by opening the attribute panel and then look at attributes. And you can see here, it says the scale of that piece. This one is eight centimeters by eight centimeters by 0.35 centimeters. So the length of this piece here is gonna be 0.35 centimeters. So that's how we know the length of the hypotenuse of that triangle. All right, so we found the adjacent length, which was half the distance from the shoulder to the hand. And we also found the hypotenuse, which was just the length of the piece of the arm. In this diagram, I have A, which is the adjacent, C, which is the hypotenuse, and B, which is the opposite. So we found A, the adjacent, and C, the hypotenuse, and we can calculate the length of B, the opposite, using some math. This is the Pythagorean theorem, which is A squared plus B squared equals C squared. We're trying to solve for B, the length of the opposite. The length of C squared minus the length of A squared, and then take the square root of all that and you get B. That allows you to find the lengths of each side of this triangle here. This triangle can be positioned in an infinite amount of ways. If I were to select this, I can rotate it and you can see that there's an infinite amount of possibilities for how we wanna direction this arm. But we wanna find a direction for this arm that looks comfortable for the NPC. So as you can see here, the elbow position is facing downwards. It looks like it's comfortable for the NPC. It's not sticking its elbow up. It's not just randomly moving around. The elbow and the arms are facing downwards as you'd expect from a person who is moving their arms around naturally. In this diagram, we have the direction from the shoulder to the hand, which is the vector A here. We have the midpoint, and positions are vectors as well. So the midpoint is going to be halfway between the hand and the shoulder. 
I'm going to go in more detail of how we can find this direction here once we look at the code. Another useful direction is going to be B. This is the direction that we want the elbow to be close to. So as you can see here, the elbow is constantly moving around, but it's trying to be close to some other vector, which I've actually used this square piece to tell the IK script where we want that vector to be close to. So this square here is rotated so that one side is facing downwards and this piece here is going to try to get as close to that downwards direction as possible. So here, B is the vector direction that we want the elbow to be close to. So this can move all around, but it's going to try to get as close to B as possible. And to do that, we use cross products. So cross products give us a vector that is perpendicular to two other vectors. Let's take a closer look at what that means. We have A and B. I'm going to move these out. All right, so here we have vector A and vector B. And there's always going to be two directions that are perpendicular to both A and B. And a cross product allows us to find that. So if we put this C here, you can see that it's at a 90 degree angle to B. And it's also at a 90 degree angle to A. Cross products figure that out for you. So you just have to put A and B into a cross product block. And it figures out which direction is going to be perpendicular to both of those two vectors. The next vector we want to find is D. To find the vector D, we can take the cross product of C here and A. So since we're finding the cross product of these two, D is going to be perpendicular to both C and A. And this vector here just so happens to be in the same direction as elbow dir here. This is really valuable because it allows us to know the direction from the midpoint to the elbow. Okay, so we found the direction from the midpoint to the elbow. And before, when we were doing all those diagrams with A, B, and C, the hypotenuse, adjacent, and opposite, we found the length of B. And that's everything you need to know to find the elbow position. The elbow position is positioned in the direction of elbow dir and in the distance of B. Now let's look at the code so that we can take a look at how to put all of this into math so that the computer can figure out how to move your IK script. Here is the script for the IK. And I'm gonna walk through each of these pieces here and show which part of the diagram it's referring to so you can relate them. So the first thing we're gonna find is the middle position which you see is this dot here. To find a position that's halfway between two other positions, we use lerp. Now, we can see here we have position of the shoulder, position of hand, and we also have 0.5. So 0.5 tells us that mid position is gonna be halfway between those two positions. If it was 0.75, then it would be 75% of the way from the shoulder to hand. Next, we find the adjacent, which was the distance from the middle position to the position of the shoulder. That was the length of A. So the adjacent here, this math finds the length of A. Then we have the opposite, which is this equation. This was B equals the square root of C squared minus A squared. This chunk of code here, puts that into code. We're taking the square root of the hypotenuse squared minus the adjacent squared. Next up, we have the elbow look direction. That was the direction that this shoulder piece is facing. So if I were to go into this block and take a look at it, you'd find that the Z plus axis is facing downwards. And that's really valuable for our IK script to see where the elbow direction is. This part here is the math that we walked over right here. So we had A, we had C, we had D, and then we used some cross products to find the direction of D, which was the same direction that we want the midpoint to be to the elbow. And we also have a normalize in here. What normalize does is it takes a vector 
and it reduces its length to one. So let's just say this C direction here has a length of three. What normalize is gonna do is it's gonna keep the direction, but change its length so that it's only one. All right, so we found elbow direction and we normalize it so that we just have a direction with a length of one. And now that we have elbow direction, we can multiply that by opposite. So we found opposite over here, which was Pythagorean theorem. When you multiply a vector by a number, that scales the vector by that number. So if you have a vector with a length of one, and then you multiply it by, say, two, then it's going to double it. If you multiply it by three, it's going to triple it. So it's just changing the length of that vector. But we just have a vector that's one meter long, and we're going to multiply it by the b here the opposite that we found earlier. And that's gonna allow that vector to have the same direction that we found here and the length of B. Okay, so we have elbow dir, we multiplied it by the opposite, and that just gives us a direction. So this elbow direction here could be anywhere in the world. We want this elbow direction here be positioned so that it starts at the middle and points towards the elbow. And to do that, we have mid, which we calculated that was the point halfway between the shoulder and the hand. And then we add this direction and length, and that positions that direction at the elbow so that it points over here. And also, when the math just so works out that when you take the mid and add this direction, you end up with the position of the elbow. And that's the most important step for our process is finding that elbow position. All right, so now that we have the elbow position, we just need to move these pieces to the right places relative to the elbow, the hand, and the shoulder. The upper arm here is just halfway between the shoulder and the elbow. And just like we used LERP before to find the middle point, which was halfway between the shoulder and hand, we can also use LERP to find the point that is halfway between the elbow and the shoulder. So let's take a look at that. This code block here, we're LERPing between the shoulder and the elbow, and we have 0.5 here. So that positions the upper arm halfway between the shoulder and the elbow. And then we're also doing the same exact thing with the lower arm. We also need to rotate those two pieces. Right now, we just have the position of this piece, but this could be rotated however way in the world. There's infinite ways this could be rotated. So we want to rotate it from the shoulder to the hand. To do that, we are using look towards, which allows us to have that piece rotated from the elbow to the shoulder. All right, and that's it. So we have found everything we needed to do. It is doing that calculation every single frame. The headpiece here is using an animation. I just recorded an animation. I moved it around with my hand, and so are the hands. These two hand pieces here are just using an animation to move around, but then these pieces here are using math to figure out where the upper arm and the lower arm are gonna be. So imagine having to do that all yourself by hand. That would just take forever to like constantly move the different pieces so that it follows the positions. But because we have math, we can just do that all by itself. And that saves us a ton of work to create this MPC. All right, now that we talked over the math of creating an IK script, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about how we implemented it into Minerva here. So Minerva is our witch, which explains the instructions of the world. If I click on the instruction button here. So, you want to learn how to play Magic Mania. She starts Mania. giving instructions. You have three spells. This witch here was acted out by the amazing Buffy Buffers, who did all the voice acting and the motions for Minerva in Magic Mania. What we did to get all of these recordings into place was we used uh, some blocks. We placed blocks on her head and her hands. And as she was moving around, those blocks were recording the positions so that we can put those positions onto the witch. Usually when people come into the world, they aren't going in there to read a bunch of instructions. And realizing that, I decided to create an NPC that acted out all the instructions for you. And that really captures the attention of people that come into the world 
to make sure that people learn the instructions of the game when they come in here. Using an IK script is a great way to create an NPC that captures the player's attention. I'm Sandwich, and thank you for watching.